Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Fred Dillon. He's joining us here as Head of Advisory Services at Hope Lab to talk about the launch of IME. It's a new free digital mental health tool designed to support and help LGBTQ plus teens explore and affirm their identity and learn practical ways to cope with sexual and gender minority stress. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Fred Dillon, thank you for taking the time this evening. Absolutely delighted to be here. Give us a look into your professional background, and then let's talk about this uh, recent launch. Yeah, sure. I've been at Hope Lab over 15 years, and Hope Lab is a social innovation lab as well as an impact investor. And we work to improve the mental and physical health of adolescents and young adults. And we do that in a variety of ways, but we often will help to create and then do a lot of research on products that we think can help improve the mental and emotional well-being of adolescents and young adults. Being an adolescent, a young adult, it has its own set of stresses and challenges. Uh, Being an LGBTQ plus teen must uh, add to some of those challenges in many ways. That's right. I mean, what we see, unfortunately, in the data is that LGBTQ youth are unfortunately much more likely to have uh, come up, come, face challenges around mental health and their ability to cope with some of the stressors that come up that are totally not of their own making. It's really around societal influences, discrimination, rejection, uh, fears of uh, fears of those things that can really undermine a youth's mental health. And so we were really actively trying to find ways to give kids tools that they could use to help cope with some of those stressors and help them really think through ways they can manage that stress and take care of themselves in spite of some of the stress they might encounter. Now, is this something that is an an interactive type of thing where teens can help each other? Is this something where an app or AI deals with them? Or is this, how does this, uh, this IME actually work to support these kids? Sure. IME is a web app. And by that, we mean you can access it from anywhere that you have an internet connection. So you can do that on your phone. You can do that on a computer, all of those things. And you go into it and it really performs or feels like a website where you can go and interact with different elements of the website. Um, But there are parts within it throughout that are interactive exercises that the youth will have more talking to a uh, chatbot's not really the right word, but mm-hmm. a computer intera- in, interaction where it will be asking you questions about what are the stressors that you faced? Have you tried these kinds of coping mechanisms in the past? How have those worked for you? How do you think about your gender identity and what are different ways you can explore that gender identity? So those are the kind of things that are built into the tool. Mm-hmm. We It does not have any cross like youth to youth functionality. It's mm-hmm. all an individual thing that an individual can use on their own and at their own pace and discretion to really help them think and reflect and give them tools that they can use in their everyday life. Well, what types of tools specifically are we talking about here? Are we talking um, tests, uh, surveys, quizzes? Yeah, exactly. Like you were saying, a lot of them do take the form of a of a sort of quiz or a participatory back and forth with uh, with the, the, the t- what we have on the back end, which is a type form that sort of speaks back and forth with the user, uh, but no human is involved. It's like very automated and uh, and really is about reflection. It's really about helping a young person reflect on how these stressors show up in their life and then give them tools that will help them cope with some of the situations they may find themselves in and to give them the ability to understand there are strategies they can try everything from breathing exercises to distraction to a host of other ways where they can help to make sure um, they are well they are well served and able to handle some of the stressors that are going to come up unfortunately because of what they may experience in society. Does I may address any of the us against them type of mentality that could be a, a major stressor in, in the lives of some of these uh, LGBTQ plus teens? Yeah, we certainly acknowledge that it can be very tough growing up in a world that is not always embracing of who and what you are. And what we want to really convey to these young people is this isn't because of you. This is a larger thing that's going on around you. Uh, It's not your fault that this is happening. It's something bigger than yourself. And unfortunately, it's something that has to be you have to kind of contend with in your life. And here are some strategies you can try to help mitigate 
some of the stressors that are going to come your way. Now, obviously, there is an unmet need for mental health support in many areas uh, for LGBTQ plus teens. But a moment ago, I spoke about being a teen simply, you know, having its own set of uh, horrors, for lack of a better term. Uh, <laughs> being an LGBTQ plus teen, of course, has its uh, challenges on top of being a teen. But what about a, a, an LGBTQ plus teen who just happens to be a, a teen of color? Yeah, absolutely. We we spent a lot of time thinking about this and wanted to make sure young people who might face various kinds of, of what we call minority stress, mm -hmm. stressors that could come from um, because you're different in some way than um, what society thinks you should be. How do you handle those sorts of stressors in your life? And so we really wanted to take an intersectional lens to an approach to this product and make sure that there was a lot of representation in the product itself of LGBTQ youth of color specifically. And specifically also, we really want to make sure for transgender youth and youth who were are gender nonconforming, that that was another area where we spent a lot of time making sure, one, we were listening to those youth to hear their voices and understand what their needs were. And then two, to build tools and the, all the art and everything you see in IME was really based on making sure we were able to reach and represent those young people. How long and we do know that LGBTQ um, youth of color are more likely to actually say they've considered a suicide, unfortunately, than even white LGBTQ youth. So we know when you're faced with multiple marginalized identities, it can take a toll. And we are really trying to get tools out there that can help you know, address some of those disparities that we see. Is it a leveled uh, approach? Because, you know, not all teens are 16. Some are 12, some are 13, some are 19. Is it a leveled approach? Can it uh, address different aspects of stressors or scenarios as a child uh, grows into their identity and into adulthood? Yeah, great question. We designed this specifically for teens, and by teens, we define as 13 to 19. Okay. And yeah, there's a spectrum there, no question. We had to really think, like, what language can we use here that's going to be the right for that wide range in age? So that was a lot of time we spent. But it is all the same experience, regardless of your age. Um, you might get more out of it in certain sections, depending on your developmental stage and what you're able to take in. But really, we designed it with an eye towards how can we meet as many of those, those teens as possible in that age range. And we're really clear, this isn't a tool that's for younger than, than 13 it's really designed for those uh, in that age bracket. Have you been able to receive any feedback from people who've actually used IME to their uh, benefit? Yeah, absolutely. Well, one, we take a really deep co-creation approach to developing our product. So we worked with literally hundreds of youth, about over 300 during the development stage of the product. So they were actively engaged with us on helping to figure out like the look and feel of the, of the tool, the actual language we would use. And then we affirmatively have done studies and research and gotten a lot of qualitative feedback from young people to really make the tool meet, meet their interests and needs and make sure it was representative of the, the topics that they were really concerned about. I wanted to make sure we're front and center and that we felt like the research pointed us to these are ways we can really help support these young people. So our whole process is really taking both the hearing from youth, hearing from research, and bringing those together to come up with something that could really work. And then since it's been launched, it recently launched on June 1, we've heard really great feedback, both from young people who have engaged with it, as well as adults who are working with young people and want to get it to them, uh, who have said to us, wow, you really seem to understand these youth, have really taken into consideration all of their concerns around privacy and confidentiality and security, as well as really thinking deeply about their psychological needs. Um, so that's been really great. And young people have said, yeah, this is a tool designed for and with me. And I really see that in the in the product. Fred, give us a website where we can learn more about IME. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody can access IME at imi.guide. That's imi.guide, I-M-I.G-U-I-D-E. And where can we learn more about Hope Lab? Sure, yeah, Hope Lab. You can learn more about us at hopelab.org. That's H-O-P-E-L-A-B.org. And you can learn about 
I mean a bunch of other products and projects we've worked on to help improve the emotional and mental well-being of young people. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for spending some time with us this evening. Thank you. Absolutely. It's a delight to speak with you and really appreciate the time. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Fred Dillon, Head of Advisory Services at Hope Lab. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.